Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi and I'd like to welcome you back to a continuation of our new series on the Qira'at uh, and Ahruf of the Quran and we've been talking about a number of controversies surrounding this whole topic. And if you go back to our previous uh, videos, you will see that we covered a lot of grounds on this. With me here uh, is no other than Dr. Jay Smith, who've done an amazing job, of course, as always, uh, in assisting you as the viewers to be able to understand some of these technical terms and the process and also some of the traditions surrounding this entire topic. For me, of course, I can relate to that as someone who grew up in uh, a Muslim and grew up in Saudi Arabia and was able to at least uh, study some of these things, although my understanding of these qiraat was totally different than what findings today are telling all of us basically concerning the preservation and the integrity of this book called the Quran. With that in mind, uh, Dr. J, thank you again for being mm -hmm. with us here. Uh, today, I believe you are going to address what you would ca uh, called the 30 variant Qurans. And as you know, uh, if I would have been a Muslim right now, I would have been shocked to hear you say there is 30. Yeah, I would have been shocked to see you uh, hear you say there is two different Qurans. Yeah, and I can understand. And this is something yeah. that I feel sorry for a lot of Muslims who are watching. This may be a shock for many of them. Uh, this is understandable. If you've been told this one narrative and this is what all, this is what uh, the only thing you've ever been permitted to be told, uh, this is the only thing you're not permitted to question, you just believe there is only one Quran. And right. all the Qurans are exactly the same, same words, same letters, right. has never changed since the time of Uthman or the time of Muhammad and the same that is in heaven. Now suddenly to realize, hold on a minute, there's more than one Quran. We're talking about 30 official Qurans. What 30 are we talking about? Let's go to the slide and let's look at the slide here. Here is your slide and this is straight out of Wikipedia. Anybody can get it. So I'm not making this up. Anybody can go up to Wikipedia and you will see this list here. Not in this color because this is, I've color coded them so that to help you understand because you want, I understand that some of this will go over the head of many people so we want to really dumb it down to make it as simple as possible. Let's look at the first seven on the left in green. Look at those green ones there. So if you don't mind me just telling people, the left column are the original supposedly readers. The last two are what we call the transmitters. The transmitters, the narrators, yeah. the right. students, the rawis. Right. This is the riwayat. Now, let's go to the left. Let's look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nafi from Medina, Ibn Kathir from Mecca, Abu Amr uh, from, uh, from Basra, Ibn Amir from Damascus, Asim from Kufa, Hamza from Kufa, al Kasai from Kufa. So three from Kufa, one from Damascus, one from Brasar, one from Mecca, and one from Medina, which seems to suggest Kufa is pretty important. That's right, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's amazing, isn't it? You should see Mecca's name and Medina They should all be from often. Mecca and Medina. Exactly. Every one of them should be from Mecca and Medina to be Qurayshi. Only two of them are from Mecca and Medina. The other five are from the wrong cities. They're from the wrong areas. We'll be getting to that. We'll be unpacking that later on. Who are the one that chose this guy? Look and see who chose them. The guy in black right below them, Ibn, Ibn Mujahid. Absolutely. Now here we need to look at the dates and we will be putting this on a timeline in other episodes. But just for now to introduce this, take a look at the dates. You can see uh, for Nafi, he died in 785. Ibn Kathir, 738. Abu Amr, 770. Ibn Amir, 736. He's got, let me just look right here. And I, this, is the, this is Ibn Amir right here. This is the guy right here we're talking about. And he is Ibn Amir, 736, he is the earliest. So I've got him, you have him, you can buy them. I just got these two weeks ago. You can see it's all in Arabic, is it not? It is, and also it's color coded for in terms of the different readings and sometimes they have it on the side, on the margin. So they're not, they're being tri quite transparent. You can buy these. I've heard so many Muslims say we're making this up. I've heard so many Muslims say these don't exist. I've heard so many Muslims say, no, you you thought what you held up at Speaker's Corner back in 2060 was nothing more than just books that were blank, uh, that you were just doing this just to try to mock us. No, folks, you can buy these. And if you get alquran.com, go and see it. You can see alquranonline.com. You can actually buy them if you want to. And uh, if you all start buying them, they're going to have a huge killing. Or they're going to be, I'll probably get a, I hope maybe they'll thank me for you know, sending everybody to their site. But this is right here in Illinois, you can buy them. These are from Illinois. This is from America. So if I can get them here in the United States, and here you can see there are seven of them. I just ordered one about 10 minutes ago. That's gonna be called Duri is coming. That's gonna be coming in a week. So as more come up, I'll keep ordering them. Hatun is, and I'll be getting to her a little bit later. She bought many more than this. So this is the earliest, 736. Look at the date, 736. What's interesting is those were all chosen by 
Ibn Mujahid, what is his date? Look and see what his date is. 936. Muhammad died in 632. So we're talking about 300 years later. At least. So these were not even chosen for another 300 years after Muhammad. And let's stop here. In, five, uh, in, in 652, didn't Uthman also supposedly collect the Quran in a Qurayshi dialect and burned the other readings? Burned all of them. If you look at the seven that are there, these are the seven of the most of the, of the most important. Five of them are from the areas that Uthman burned. They right. should not be in that list. That's true. What are they doing there? That is true. Now there's three more. Look at the red ones. Go back. Look at the red ones. Let's go back to that slide. Three again. more canonical readings. That's what canonical uh, readings uh, that were added mentioned. to the seven, right. and that's Abu Jafar from Medina, Yaqub from Basra, and Khalaf from Kufa. Chosen by whom? Chosen by Al Jazari. Look at his dates, 1429. That's folks, 700 to 800 years after the time of Muhammad, 15th century. Muhammad died in the seventh century. We're almost 800 years later, those three are chosen. Now, when you look at those 10, Nafi, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Amr, Ibn Amir, Asim, Hamza, Qaysai, Abu Jafar, Yaqub, Khalaf, excuse me for my Arabic, what's missing there? What name's missing? Under the readers, uh, Hafs is the one that is missing. Because Hafs is the one. Here's the Hafs. This is the Hafs that we use all the time. That's the commonly used, the 1924 this is the edition. This is the 1920. This is the official canonical text since 1985, made official by King Fahd himself. It's known as the Fahd edition. It's known as Hafs as the guy that actually wrote the Arabic. In 796, he died. His name's not in that list, is he? He's not one of the readers. That's right. So there was a problem because there were so many of these starting to proliferate in the 8th 9th and 10th century, that Ibn Mujahid in the 10th century had to choose two more from every one of these seven readers. And that's in the purple. Let's go put up the slide again. You can see the names. There's two different columns. Uh, they're starting with Kaloon and Warsh. They, had from, uh, they were the readers or the narrators. I'm sorry, not the readers, the transmitters or the narrators or the Rawis uh, underneath Nafi. Al-Bazi and Kunbul are from, uh, uh, from Ibn Kathir. And we're going to get into this in more depth, so I don't want to go through all the names right now. Right. But I want to show you where Hafs is. There is Hafs there. Hafs suddenly appears. He is from Asim, and he is from Kufa. That's going to be problematic. We're going to be, that we'll be talking about later, later. But so he is not even one of the official readers. He is nothing more than a narrator. He's nothing more than a student, as you call them. That's right. And, and again, uh, the, the idea, I mean, here's what's so interesting, is like you're told all the time these are their students, and you think, oh, the student, of course, I'm passionate about my teacher. I want to be with them. I want to learn from them. They mentor me, and that's why I want to carry on their legacy. And you want to carry on their writing. That's right. You would write the same thing they yeah. wrote, right? But what we're finding out is these guys are even... They have they hundreds. Later, you know, they have thousands. They couldn't of have lived with their teachers. And they had. They not only are they not from the same century. Many of them. They never knew their readers. They didn't even follow what their readers were writing. Yeah, but, but that's, that's why you have multiple. Ones, that's why we're you know? gonna. That's yeah. why we're gonna get. Now I just want to show you the next slide. Let's go back to the slides again. And uh, here is the 23. There are the 23 that Bernie Powers has now collected down in Australia. Uh, he was on the live stream with me a few weeks ago uh, there at Fander Films. Right. He has spent, and his team have spent an enormous amount of time, I don't know how many years, going through these 23 and unpacking, but specifically they have looked at the Warsh and the Huffs. We're going to be getting that uh, to that later in another episode to see what they have found between these right. two. But I, I really want to come back to Hatun. Hatun is the one I really want to highlight because Hatun is the one that has helped me out more than else. We're talking about Hatun Tosh, who was my colleague. We were on the ladder together. She was always next to me uh, there at Speaker's Corner every Sunday. And she was the one that actually started collecting these back in 2013, 2014, going around the Arab world, not herself. She was sent other people that to, uh, to find them. And she came up with this list of 26. I'm just gonna look at the 26. As I put them up, why don't you just go ahead and, and read them? Because I'm gonna desecrate the Arabic. We'll you read a few of them, you know. Okay. We don't have to read all. Uh, so there's the First one? So uh, this one uh, basically riwayat is Susi. Okay. Uh, this one uh, uh, riwayat Hafs an Asim, uh, basically, uh, Abi Jafar. So. Okay. So, and he is he is actually a reader. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, Qaraat Yaqub. Okay. Let's go to this guy. Yeah. This one is uh, Duri. He's not the only one. There's another one of his coming up. Uh, and you have a Basri in there as well. You have Ibn Amir in here. Uh, here we have uh, Khalaf, basically, on Tariq al-Durra. Uh, you have Al Layth ibn Khalid and um, uh, Warsh and Nafi, Tariq al Azraq. And here's another Warsh. That's an Asbahani. Asbahani. 
Uh, uh, here we have uh, Riwayat Ibn Wardan, uh, we have Ibn Jamaz in there, uh, Duri here. Uh, I mean, there's so many of them. Riwayat Khalaf and Hamza, uh, Al Kisa'i. He's a reader. Right? Uh, Shoba. He is a narrator. Yeah, Ibn Kathir. And, Hisham. Right? Hisham Ibn Ammar. Al Bazi. Uh, Ibn Kathir. Uh, one more time. Uh, there's um, Khalaf there. Right. So Shoba. So I think, I have here in this list I think here. people get the idea that uh, we have so many because uh, the so-called students also disagreed or at least deviated from the reader uh, of their readers. That's why you have multiple times the same name pops up with different uh, narrator. And here's Kalun. So those are the 26. These are the 26 that we held up back there in 2016 where Muhammad Hijab had his crisis. They have faith. grown to what, 37 now? Here's the 37 now that she just sent me this picture. I asked her to say, give me the ones that you have now. She has 37. Well, didn't we just, just get, done, get done saying that there are only 30 authoritative ones? True. There's a lot more, but we're not going to get into that. She's already found And we haven't even mentioned the additional four on top of the ten. Okay, and there you yeah. go. we're going to have right. to talk about that. And now, yeah. here is me holding my proud seven that I just got about a week ago. So that's why I have them here in front of me on the desk in front of me. And I just want to show you that you can get them yourself. Don't, you don't have to go to North Africa. You don't have to go to all those bookstores. You can actually get them yourself. I was able to get them online at alquranonline.com. Now, if, if I'm going to able, am able, in fact, I just ordered one about a half an hour ago. Another one, Alduri, has, has just come available, so I've ordered him. And I'm going to keep ordering them and try to catch up to Hatun if I can. But it's this that has probably caused an enormous amount of backlash coming out of the Muslim world because they are not aware of these Qira'ats. They are not aware of this number. They are not aware that there is more than just one. There are at least 30 official ones. We're going to find out there's a lot more than 30 unofficial ones. Absolutely. And, um, uh, you know, what is it that you think, um, uh, you know, people can benefit from this, first of all? And second of all, what is it that we're going to talk about right after this? Well, uh, well, the reason why we're showing this and the reason I'm really underlining this is because I get this response from Muslim after Muslim saying, Jay, you're just making this up. Jay, so that's, that's an benefit here to show you physically. Hatun did the same back in 2016. Yeah. Those are just blank pieces of books. You just made, you just try to make, uh, cause a lot of fuss. You're trying to cause a lot of anger. These don't exist. And I'm saying they do exist. You can buy them yourself. Don't trust me. Go ahead and go online and buy them yourself to prove to yourself that every one of these, and take a look and when you open up you'll see they are in Arabic these are not these are not blank pieces of paper every one of them has pages they're all in Arabic and do you see dark critical marks in them right do you see vowelization right so these are all from the 8th century and 9th century up until 905 the 10th right. century so we're talking about 8th 9th and 10th century they are they don't even begin to appear this is the earliest this is a, over a hundred years after Muhammad so they have nothing to do with Muhammad when Ibn Mujahid chose his his seven, he never considered them to be divine. He never assumed that they were from Muhammad. He always knew the dates. And he chose them because there was such a proliferation. He wanted to limit them so there wouldn't be a huge amount of confusion. And fascinating enough, of the seven, five of them were from the wrong cities. So for him, that was not a concern. When you say the wrong city, meaning like you don't mean, you mean like it's not from Mecca or Medina. They were not Qureshi. Yeah. They were not That's the Qureshi right. dialect. Okay. Very good. So what should our uh, viewers expect What we're going to do now is, in the next episodes, we're going to actually look and see what, what was happening in the 7th century. We're going to start with the 7th century. We're going to look and see what was going on. We're going to look at the different generations. And we're, we're talking about sometimes four, sometimes five generations of single strand, single strand isnad between Muhammad and when these Qadats start to appear, which goes against everything we know about it's not. It's not has to be multiple strands. You Remember, have a chain of narrators. Yeah, multiple change. Yes. The more, the better, because the more popular it is. That's right. And then we're going to actually go and we're going to look and see some of the real problems from the 7th century. And I'm, that's where we're going to look and ask what in the world was happening at the time of Muhammad? What in the world was happening at the time of Uthman? From then, we're going to go to a whole other episode looking at the 8th century, when these start to appear. And then we're going to look at them on a timeline. We're going to start putting timelines out so you can actually see how many, how many years we're talking about. This is not from the time of Muhammad. This is much, 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 much later. Thank you, as always. And hopefully everyone is, uh, uh, you know, we're wetting your appetite right here. Hopefully you're excited about what uh, you're uh, hearing. By the way, folks, uh, those series, I mean, it's we, we've done a number of series in the Quran so far. So we're going to add this to the same series. We may have uh, multiple playlists within that, but these are very academic 
and you are gonna benefit a great deal from them and hopefully you can even use them in your own circle and also use them with your Muslim friends because these are very damaging to the idea that the Quran is a preserved book and therefore if it is not a preserved book we want the Muslim people to come to the real book the Bible and the real man that's our Lord Jesus Christ thank you so much for watching until uh, we see you again uh, next time have a blessed day Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sira International. Also, click on the bell so that you can receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or we go live. And I would like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking on the link right below. And that way you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you on how you can give to our channel. So thank you from the bottom of my heart.